This is Andy Gutierrez from StarWars.com, and you are listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z. This is the podcast you're looking for. This is James Arnold Taylor, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi. Hmm, I have a good feeling about this. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to CWK Live. Hey, we're back on a Tuesday, and it's great to see all of you talking some Star Wars together, of course. I'm Dan Zare. I am the host of Coffee with Kenobi. I hope everybody had a very, very Merry Christmas. I know that our family did. Our whole family was home, which was great. Um, just seeing the family together, everybody being home. And yes, we were a little bit snowed in, which is part of the fun from last week. And it all worked out beautifully, playing games, watching movies, just spending time together. Just like we do. And yes, Brian, you are in the right place. You are on time on Tuesday. And Ben says, good evening. Hello, Ben. Great to see you. And Mary is here too. Happy Tuesday. He's, she says, hope everyone is starting to thaw out from that Arctic blast. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we're glad. In fact, so last weekend it was below zero. And this weekend coming up, it's going to be in the 50s. So that is pretty wild. That is pretty well. It's like we're going from planet to planet or something like that. You will see that in the Coffee with Kenobi studio, the Christmas decorations are down. We, in fact, took down our family Christmas decorations today. Can you believe it? But we also had them up pretty early in the middle of November. So it was time. It was time. We had a great time, and I hope you all did as well. So on today's show, we have your top five moments from Tales of the Jedi Practice Makes Perfect. The year in Star Wars and your Star Wars resolutions, and of course, your comments and questions. So let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. Cha-cha-cha. Well, that is not what I wanted to happen. Let's try that again. Let's take a look at what's brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. All right, so I feel like this is as good a time as any. And what's brewing the world stars this week is you. Let's talk about what Star Wars was for you in the year 2022 because we're just, we're two days after Christmas. We are a couple of days before New Year's Eve in 2023, which is hard to believe, but also quite, quite natural and quite fun because everything is so organic. And I love traditions and I love counting on the fact that Every year is a new chance to start over and make things happen. So what are some things that you all, you know, loved about Star Wars this year? And what are some things you're looking forward to in 2023? Daniel is here and he says, hi, everybody. I have my new CWK notebook with me. Well, Daniel, that is fantastic. And look, in the CWK Cafe, of course, we've got our Coffee with Kenobi T Public store, coffeewithkenobi.com slash shop. And Daniel purchased a CWK notebook, which I've never seen in person before of course we helped design them but i've never seen one in person and that i tell you what buddy that was cool and daniel has his with him which is so awesome and minta is here too hello minta this is the way it's cwk day good to see you minta men says can't believe the book of Boba fett was coming out a year ago around this point you know what i was looking at that i mean what are all the shows we had this year we had the book of boba fett we had Obi-Wan Kenobi. We had, of course, Andor. We, what else do we have in 2022? What am I missing? That's so obvious. Um, huh. I'm thinking about when, when was Bad Batch Season 1. Was that this year or was it last year? It's all really kind of confusing. It's all sort of jumbling together. If only there was a way to access easy information at the drop of a hat. Like with, say, a cell phone or a Google machine or something like that. If only. Men says the most obvious is Tales of the Jedi, since we're talking about tonight. Yes, Tales of the Jedi. A terrific one that I really, really love and was great this year. Mary's top 22. Mary Mary is seeing everybody at Celebration. I was going to bring that up, and I'm glad that you did, Mary. Yes, Star Wars Celebration was about as good as it gets. And I had a great time there. I had a great time seeing all of you. We had a great uh, evening. I think it was Saturday night, wasn't it? We all, a lot of us got together at Downtown Disney and had a great meal together. That was an, an excellent time. 
I mean, this Bad Batch came around in January. I thought so, too. Yeah, like early in early in January. I thought so. Dan, of course, loved Kenobi this year for obvious reasons. You just look at his profile picture and his awesome work for that. He waited so long for that production. Yes, we, we all did, and boy, was it terrific. Vince is pretty sure Bad Batch was fall 2021. I, I know. I, you're right. I just can't remember when it ended. Did it end before the new year? I don't know. I don't. I can't remember. I guess we could just look back at our old CWK Live and check it out that way. Uh, also, for Star Wars, we had uh, a lot of great books released. Uh, they went back in time for the High Republic. And that has been, of course, great. And that's fairly newish in 2022, but that's been some great stuff there. We had um, a lot of great books. The Shadow of the Sith, for example, which was terrific. A lot of great comics, a lot of great action figures. We got the news at the D23 Expo and got to see clips and glimpses of Mandalorian Season 3, the Ahsoka show that's coming out next year. And, of course, the Indiana Jones trailer, and finally everybody got to see. And, of course, that was spectacular as well. Uh, Bad Batch trailer. Uh, ben says episode 1 came out in May 2021. And episode 16 came out August 13, 2021. Thank you, Ben. It all jumbles together, so thank you for getting that uh, figured out for us. Uh, Mary says Tales of Jedi and Arn Kenobi were highlights. The Republic books have been really good. Agreed. Uh, Brian just recently read Shadow, started reading Shadow of the Sith, only a few chapters in. Brian, you'll love it. Of course, the author is great, Adam Christopher. He and I have become pretty good buddies. And I have an interview with him after you listen to, after you read this show uh, that you might want to listen to on Coffee with Kenobi that I think you'll really enjoy. Uh, Daniel says, plus one on the High Republic novel this year. There you go. I'm glad. There's, there's some great books. There's some great stuff. So what are you looking forward to in 2023? I am certainly looking forward to Star Wars Celebration in London. I think that's going to be great because, of course, you know, I, I know a lot of us are not able to go, but some of our friends in Europe and the UK are going to join. Uh, so that'll be great to see all of you. We've got Bad Batch Season 2, which I've seen about 90% of it, and I'm very excited. I can't say anything about it yet, but I will be able to soon. But I'm excited for it to come out for sure. We have Mandalorian Season 3, which is going to be massively huge. I've been re-watching it in the fall with my mythology students at the high school where I teach. Hearing their insights and re-watching that series has been... No, no, watch all of them. We just watch key highlights and we do a lot of essay work on them and a lot of analytical stuff. But the things that my students come up with, which I can't take credit for, it's just their brilliance and their insights, is just really inspiring to me. And it just makes me realize how incredible that series is. I mean... The Mandalorian really is, is just another level. I mean, I know Andor is too, but The Mandalorian just, it's got everything that you love about Star Wars and it just deepens the mythology and adds some layers and nuance to the Force, to uh, the Mandalorians themselves. It's just, there's a lot to love about it. Very much looking forward to that. Of course, I'm looking forward to Ahsoka, but boy, talk about taking a deep breath because that thing I think is going to knock us, uh, knock us um, out of our socks. Daniel says, so much content next year, Ahsoka, definitely. Ben says, Ahsoka and getting some of our Rebel friends in live action, that has to be the highlight. Yes, yes, we know for sure that Sabine is going to be in it. Um, and that's all we know for sure, and that's going to be amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think we did see a silhouette of Hera in the trailer as well. I think that's right. Boy, ooh, I forgot about that because, of course, I avoid anything that's speculatory. But my goodness, Wow. Oh, that makes me smile so much. Cannot wait. All right. Well, as you as we're going on, and of course, at the end of the show, if you want to add more things you're looking forward to or things you really liked about 2022, uh, please feel free to bring them up. But for now, let's talk about our top five. Let's talk about our top five for tonight. Top five moments from Tales of the Jedi. Practice makes perfect. A truly moving, powerful episode where we see the taskmaster that Anakin Skywalker is, why he is the way that he is towards Ahsoka, and how pivotal it is to her actual, and yes, actual survival. Uh, Josh says, can't wait to find out who will play Hera. I can either, Josh, and it's great to see you here. Yes, yeah, so this, again, a spectacular episode. Brad just makes perfect. 
I love the time jumps, the evolution of Ahsoka's training and why it's so critically important. Just really smart. So let's get into our top five. I'm sure you've got a lot of great stuff. All of you that you want to talk about. So five for me is Excited Padawan, of course. Because I love Rebels so much, speaking of Rebels, I got to talk about seeing Caleb Doom, Caleb Doom uh, slash Kanan Jarrus uh, with his with his Jedi Master. Uh, Depa Balaba, you see them at the beginning when Ahsoka is surrounded by that force field doing her training and she does a couple of cool moves and and Caleb Doom is so excited and impressed he jumps up and gives like a little standing ovation and they just they don't they, they don't give it a ton of attention but it's just there's just enough there and it's wonderful it's just wonderful because Caleb slash Kane is one of my favorite characters and I, and I love Ahsoka too so that was a, a great little thing it's almost an easter egg Josh only goes by casting announcements too of course that's right I love it I love it. Mary's number five, Caleb Doom. There you go. And his match at the beginning of Ahsoka's training. I went down a rabbit hole with Rebels to see if Kenan shows any recognition of Ahsoka when she comes down the ladder or later in season two. And what did you discover? What did you discover? I mean, I don't remember there being like a clear thing, but that doesn't mean that there wasn't. So I'm interested to see what you found out, Mary. That's cool. Minta says, it was interesting to see how the Jedi set up their own training sessions to see how Ahsoka would react to the droids, but it's clear that to see that Anakin wasn't impressed. No, because to him it's just like artificial tests. Those things are easy, of course, for him they are. But he had more in mind for it, and thank goodness he did. Ben also, number five, Caleb Doom cameo. That was a fun plug. Now, but I like knowing that he knew Ahsoka as a Padawan. Isn't that cool? I like that too because his estimation of her uh, obviously was very high, and it only grows over time. Because he gets to see her as a Padawan, and then, of course, as a master that she later becomes. Dana watched the Sith Lord, been a bit behind lately, and had no power for three days, including Christmas. You know what? That is okay. That is okay, Daniel. Um, That's a great episode, too. And if you have any thoughts on this one, jump in. Otherwise, just hang out, eat some popcorn, and and give the, the, the expected Daniel wit that we love so much. Brian's number five, the irony of Jesse being the first to send Ahsoka. Yeah, that was quite ironic as well. Really ironic. Um, wow. See, so again, the, uh, Dave Filoni and company, they know what they are doing. That's really great. Ben says, you can have my top five, Daniel. Yeah, we're going to share. Barry said, I did not see there was any recognition from her from before. Ahsoka really dressed Ezra in the first episode as Fulcrum. Then by season two, it seems there's been a bit of a time jump. Yeah, we don't really get that necessary perspective so i'm glad you did that homework for us mary thank you that's above and beyond on time there's a running joke for number four for me well where anakin says i'm late and obi-wan says that's what i meant and they say hey you're right on time then later as anakin says the same thing to ahsoka so the master and the padawan are very similar with their punctuality or lack thereof and that was that was just fun obi-wan with Anakin and then Anakin with Ahsoka. Absolutely delightful. I just like that. Really cool. Number four from Minta is young Caleb Doom. Yes. I love that as well. Daniel's five was seeing Rex and the clones again. That was cool. Even anytime we get to see Rex, especially anything in that Clone Wars era, there's still, even though we've addressed a lot of the major stuff, you just hope there's some key things out there that we've never seen because I think we love that part of Star Wars so much. Great. Uh, what does everybody else have for their number four on this incredible episode? Which, again, really captures not only Anakin and Ahsoka's unique bond as Master and Apprentice. Master and Padawan is probably a better term because Apprentice has definitely that Sith connotation. But how much everything builds upon itself leading to the Siege of Mandalore in Order 66. Number four for Ben, same as mine. I thought I was late. That's what I meant. We're on the same page again tonight. That's awesome, Ben. That's a, I'm very grateful for that. Brian, number four, the late joke. I love when they extend the conversations. There you go. Brian, Ben, and Dan, just like we did on Willow. How great is that? Number four for Mary. Anakin and Obi-Wan's conversation during their first training testing session. Their chemistry is so good. It was great to hear Matt Lanter and James Arnold Taylor again. I agree, and I wanted more James Arnold Taylor as Obi-Wan. All these new things we're getting from this time for uh, time 
frame time part time era why i'm having such a hard time with my words tonight uh maybe i still had too much christmas goodness i don't know but they um i want to see them more together and we get to see a lot of it in clone wars of course but you can never have too much of those two or of james arnold taylor as obi-wan kenobi for sure okay i think that's everyone that's that's chiming in so far with number four i don't think i missed anyone and mary agrees not enough jat and tails no absolutely not you can never have too much we always need more of james arnold taylor Four for Daniel is Anakin and asking her if she would like the real test instead of the one every Jedi does. And then you just know, okay, what is going to happen here? But Ben says, with such a heavy episode and series, I like when they get a little bit of humor injected in there. Sorry, Commander. I do too. Uh, because these are all pretty heavy, for sure. And there's not a lot of lightness in any of these. Number three, um, I think we see Jedi Master I'm Gonna Die, uh, which is quite a name. I've talked about that in previous in a previous CWK live when we talked about Clone Wars or like favorite Jedis. I think I include him as one of my favorite Jedis, non-traditional Jedis. He's only in one episode in Clone Wars, I believe. Um, and uh, he doesn't live very long, but, and that, that, I mean, hence the name, that's the name they gave him. But he's just a cool character. He doesn't talk, he doesn't do anything. He just kind of stands there and looks, but I really like that character. So it was cool to see I'm a gonna die really, 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 really briefly in this episode boy the lighting is so bright in here let me try to fix this that's that is not what we want to do here let's see mm, how's that oh, a little bit better a little bit better uh let's see means is three it wasn't easy to watch this go down numerous times by the clones i'm gonna pause your comment for a second yes i agree that was terrible i didn't like that either okay back to your awesome insights but Anakin knew that it was necessary for her to go through the process since war is never predictable. Neither are the enemies. Well said. Well said. Mary's number three. Just like many of your number four, you're right on time. I thought I was late. That's what I meant. Uh, said verbatim by Anakin and then Ahsoka. It's classic them, isn't it? Just classic. Uh, okay. Uh, any other threes that anybody wants to chime in on? I wonder if anybody else caught that I'm a gonna die sighting. Again, I'm I'm not when I had the captions on. It's not like because he doesn't talk or say anything. They don't reference who it actually is, but it sure looks like that character to me. I'm trying to think of the species that I'm a gonna die is. I'd have to look that up. Uh, let's see what else we have. Number three for Ben. Anakin offers Ahsoka quote the real test end quote. He's always taught differently than the Jedi Order. We've seen that so many times, so of course he wouldn't agree with this test. Yeah, that would not that would not be his thing. He's very dismissive and certainly uh, pompous and pretentious, but with good reason, because he knows that he wants her to stay alive, and he thinks that she's better than that. And thank goodness he did. Brian's three. Anakin's disdain for the official test and further distancing himself from the Jedi way. Yes. Which, of course, he's going to be quite an expert in, isn't he? Daniel's three is Kenobi goodness, getting to see him in his longer locks. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for bringing that up. We didn't really talk about that before, but Obi-Wan Kenobi has this different haircut. Kind of puts him, you know, right in smack dab and uh, attack of the clones turf. That was cool to see. And I don't think we've ever seen that design in this clone, even though it's not Clone Wars, in this Clone Wars era style animation. All right, let's go to number two. Number two is training angst. Training angst. And now what I'm talking about here is what I mean to refer to. Every time they kept blasting in Ahsoka and it seemed like it was never going to end, you know, even when you watch it in subsequent times, it's just a little stressful or angsty because you just don't, even though she's being stunned, you know that it, takes a lot out of you. It makes you sleepy. Uh, it's just disturbing. And maybe just because it's a foreshadowing into what we know is going to happen. That could very much be why it's so like troublesome to see and painful. But again, ultimately it's a nice, um, it's a nice reminder that sometimes when you're learning, uh, from someone, sometimes it's very difficult and it can be emotionally vexing or stressful or challenging. Of course, on a different scale, than in a fictional universe with blasters and stun stun blasts and lightsabers. 
but still the idea is there. As a parent, as a teacher, as a mentor, like I talked about in my book, Stars, I'm Your Father, uh, teaching can be difficult and there are some hard lessons, but ultimately there are good reasons and they, the failure helps you to grow. But still, it can be awkward and that is, of course, what we get to experience here. Number two, for me to Jad is Kenobi, we need more of him. Yes, absolutely. Brian says, Obi-Wan's here reminded me of 2003 Clone Wars. Okay, yeah, that's good. I'm sure that's part of the decision for the artistic style as well. Mary's set number two is Anakin telling Ahsoka she can go against Rex and the boys. She can go against anyone with a blaster. And then time jump showing her progress with Anakin always watching over her. So awesome, right? And seeing like uh, the difference in her Leku or and her, I think they're, are they Leku for Togrudas? I'm not sure. And um, seeing her clothing and just seeing her grow up. And plus, Ashley Eckstein is so talented. And hearing her change Ahsoka's voice uh, based on how old Ahsoka is, which is terrific. Absolutely terrific. Uh, Ben's number two. Quote again, and quote, draws parallels to Miracle on Ice. I agree, yes. My two favorite combined stars in hockey. Oh, just like Colby Mead. We like to question tough practices like this, but Anakin knows it's the only way to ensure she survives. Exactly, exactly. It's uncomfortable sometimes to watch, but the end result and the lessons are just too important not to learn. Not to learn. All right, Ben's, uh, Matt is here. Hello, Matt. Hello, everyone. Sorry, Mike. Great to see you. Matthew, hope you had a great Christmas. Uh, Matt says, Anakin seems to know what Ahsoka will be facing in the near future. I know. Kind of haunting. Daniel says, Snips in her gradual evolution of the clones technique. I wonder if this is why she liked to have two lightsabers. Oh, that's a good observation. I hadn't thought of that. Ben says, yeah, the Leku is right. I thought it was. I thought it was. So good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks. For, I'm, I'm glad I've got my fact checkers here. Normally, I, when I'm writing something or whatever, I can like look things up online or in a book or something like that. But I don't have to. And I've got my Star Wars experts here right there making me look good. So thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan Neal says, Togruta equals tails. It must. It must. Brian's number two is Caleb Doom. Can't get enough of one of my favorite Jedis. Agreed. Seeing him watch Ahsoka and Depa Blaba escort him quickly away after the lesson. Delightful. And again, I like that we have them. We have Yoda. But there's no dialogue because it's not really their story. But having them there and seeing all like the the high ups, or at least in our fan minds and in the Jedi Order, just has a lot of weight. Has a lot of weight to it. All right. It is time for number one. It's ironic I'm doing a drum roll because for Christmas, Mason got a drum set. And so he, he joked about bringing his drum set down here for when we do the drum rolls. Number one for me. Uh, is denouement. Now, denouement, for those of you who are not aware of what that word means, that is a French word in the world of literature. Uh, denouement is the resolution of all of the events that finishes off the climax and kind of shows, ties up everything that has happened in the episode. So the denouement here, the resolution here is, of course, hey, all this happened to get her ready for Order 66, which we see, of course, in the Siege of Mandalore. It's a beautiful denouement, and when it happens, you gasp. I, I, I literally remember gasping out loud when I saw how they were going to resolve this episode with the denouement of her in Order 66 with Rex leading into that room, that giant hangar uh, with all those clones firing at her and Rex, and I just thought, brilliant. It's absolute brilliant. So that is my number one, the denouement. Okay, what does everyone else have? Minta says, time jump with each session. Ahsoka has improved her skills, even to the point where she begins to push herself. And all leads up to the final episode of the Clone Wars series, we all admire and despair. Exactly. Exactly. Number one, for Mary, let's hope all that training pays off. Rex says to Ahsoka as they face the clones after Order 66. It's so heart-wrenching since we know what happens to all the clones on the ship. The emphasis on Jesse at the beginning of the training is how Jesse reacts to Ahsoka at the end. Again, the irony... The brilliance of this, uh, it's just powerful. And I like, it's cool to hear you, all of you how it's affected you too. Daniels are one of the culmination of the story and how she learned how to survive the clone attack. Are we all going to have it? It's the same one. Uh, ben translates strictly as untying. Exactly. Denouement is untying. The unraveling of all the events 
that lead to the resolution of the story, of the narrative. Brian's on one, Ahsoka's new resolve after Anakin's coaching sessions. She knew there was a real reason that he was pushing so much and she could see how much he cared for her and why his tough love. And he got cut off there, but I know you'll follow up. Uh, Ben's on one, let's hope all that training pays off. It's beautiful knowing that Anakin may have turned, but in the end, it's his training that saved her. Dramatic irony for us. Dramatic irony is when we know what's going to happen, but the characters in the story don't. And it's great. It's really effective. Uh, Matt Graken's number one. Ahsoka's determination to keep improving against what seemed to be impossible odds and improving herself after years and years of training. Her sheer grit and determination that eventually defines her as a... Sorry, yeah, I lost it there. As a character and saves her life and makes her once again one of the most beloved characters in stars. Well said, Matt, and I totally agree with you. Josh says, anyone with victory and death is always a gut punch. Yep. There is no way around it. It's spellbounding and it takes your breath away, but it's also very powerful. And the narrative weight is something that's impossible to forget about. Absolutely impossible. Well, this was fun. This was so fun uh, because it's a terrific episode. And next week's, of course, is also spectacular. It's the last one in Tales of the Jedi. This is Resolve. Resolve is uh, the last one in Tales of the Jedi. And I believe, if I'm correct, wait, am I missing something? No, I'm not. We planned this on purpose. Then the week after, we're going to start on looking at Bad Batch. So good. Yes, yeah, so next week is top your top five moments from Tales of the Jedi Resolve. Another great one and a great one to end this this little micro series on. Now let's go ahead and jump into Ask Dan Z. All right, time to ask Dan Z. We can talk more about what you're looking forward to in 2023 or what you loved about Star Wars in 2022. I um, wanted to share with you really quickly while you're thinking about what you'd like to jump in on, if, if you have anything on your mind or your heart. Pour over uh, this week. Well, Christmas is just a few days away. We release this on Christmas Day. A few days earlier, if you are on the video portion of our Patreon page, we gave our top five Christmas specials. So the Rankin Bass specials, a Charlie Brown Christmas, all kinds of great shows that we just had fun with. We've done so many Christmas episodes, so it was great to talk about these. We're running out of Christmas topics, but I'm sure some, the, the universe will provide something else for us. But we, it was fun to talk about our top five Christmas specials. If you're interested in this show or any, we've got over 200 CWK pearls. Again, those are weekly shows that come out. Hosted by me, Corey Club, and Tom Gross. We talk about Star Wars, popular culture, like this Christmas specials episode, all kinds of stuff. And you can get Pour Over for just $5 a month. You get four episodes plus the entire back catalog. So it's pretty fun. And it's a great way to help out me and Coffee with Kenobi. Plus, 10% of your monthly contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. Again, there you go. Coffeewithkenobi.com slash CWK Alliance. Uh, ben wants to know what is Mason learning on the drums, and did you invest in some earplugs? So we, got, I got him. I have like um, these big uh, noise canceling headphones I use when I mow. So I'm having him wear those, and then he just plays in his room with the door closed, and he's just kind of teaching himself. We did get him lessons, so he's going to start lessons very soon. But boy, is he having fun! As plus, I just think it's good for him. It's good for his brain. Uh, Matt says all the series coming out. So much goodness. There is a lot to be excited about. I mean, there's so many shows. There's going to be so much double coverage. There's going to be a few days. Or a few weeks where, when we are doing uh, CWK Live, we'll have both the Bad Batch and the Mandalorian at the same time. What an amazing challenge. What an amazing problem to have. But Mason is going to be with me, breaking down all episodes of the Bad Batch, which I'm extremely excited about. In fact, he wanted to know if I let all of you know that he's going to be back on CWK Live more actively for the Bad Batch. And the answer is yes. Bad Batch is great. It's a little more family friendly, uh, even though it's still pretty got some pretty intense stuff for sure. Uh, but it's more family friendly than the Andor for sure. So it'll be great to have Mason back. Brian says he can't wait for his Mando season three. I'm hoping to work on another 501st costume in 2023. Well, that 
would be awesome. Brian, I look forward to seeing that. Of course, you've got your buddies in the 501st, and Daniel's a great resource as well. Mary says, I'm sure Mason is excited about Bad Batch. Can't wait to hear his thoughts on the show. I can't either. We're going to have him set up on his own little computer. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And it's also great, of course, chatting Star Wars with each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining me, especially during the holiday season. I know there's traveling and a lot of things going on. A lot of you are with family or traveling right now. Hopefully none of you are having challenges. I know there's a lot of airport or flight challenges. Hopefully that isn't affecting all of you. But if it is, hopefully this was able to give you a quick escape or a little bit of a respite to talk about Star Wars with your friends. Ben says, can't wait to have Mason back. Thank you so much, Ben. He's looking forward to it. I mean to be the force with you. I'll talk to you soon as we record our review of Willow. Matt says, Callan has a lot of questions regarding Bad Batch. Awesome. That'll be fun. Josh says, so much to look forward to in 2023. I agree. Looking forward to it and looking forward to chatting about it with all of you. Mary says, Happy New Year, everyone. Please be safe and see you all in 2023. Sounds great. A very, very happy New Year to all of you. Be safe. Uh, get cozy in your homes. Uh, have great meals with family and friends. And remember that we will be here with you every Tuesday night and, of course, later in the week on Coffee with Kenobi to talk about Star Wars. Thanks so much, everybody. Brian says, I miss Mad-Eyed Mason. Yeah, he misses it, too, so it's going to be fun to have him. Thank you so much, everybody. Again, Happy New Year. Remember, this is the live podcast you're looking for. See you next time, and may the Force be with you. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. This is the podcast you're looking for. There's no one here. Come on.